He's gonna, I said, if I'm gonna fucking die, I'm gonna at least record this shit. What's up, wing nuts? That was my buddy Colin telling me, you'll be alright. Hate to ruin the surprise for you, but that was a lie. Now, let me give you a little bit of context here. So, we're coming out for practice at Megacross in Mendota, Illinois, and I'm on my 300 that's set up for woods riding. Normally, for anything motocross related, I would be riding my 450. But for some reason, when I pulled my 450 out of the trailer for this practice, the throttle was sticking. Not sure why, but I can't imagine that it had anything to do with the last time I rode it before this. So, yeah, instead of missing my practice, I decided that I would just grab the old 300 two-stroke out of the trailer that's set up for woods racing and give that a rip. Um, granted, I had never ridden a two-stroke on a track ever, so, you know, what could go wrong? Well, that's it. That's exactly what could go wrong. I found myself in the power band going up that jump face, and this was the day that I discovered two strokes and four strokes jump a little different. Then we got this nice lady running our direction, probably because she just got told, yeah, I, I think somebody just died over that tabletop back there. Nope, just wingnut doing wingnut things, I guess. I do go on to finish my practice session, but I could just tell something wasn't quite right every time I go over a jump or bottom this soft ass suspension. Uh, I could feel my rear tire was hitting my silencer, so I knew at the very least my subframe was toast. I do have one more little tip over coming up here, and I think that really just like compounded my anger. So I think the combination of that, what was going on with the 450, and knowing that I had already just messed up this new to me 300, sent me into a full blown rage when I get into the pits, and we're going to give you a play by play on that. So the first thing that you will notice as I start to pull off these fly cold weather gloves that I'm for some reason wearing in the middle of July, is that I am trying to practice my best ooze fraba breathing techniques. Very good. I'm gonna take my helmet off and I give it this little half-hearted slam because I really don't want to hit that van that's parked next to me. <laughs> Then I pick my helmet up and what should be the end of it all, but Colin comes back, bless his heart, he didn't know I was in the middle of a rage, and is like, Dude, you turned this thing into a missile. Dude, you turned this thing into a missile. I then trip going up the stairs into my trailer, maybe deservingly so, but that really just blows the top off and turns this into a full on catastrophic meltdown. Colin, being maybe one of the nicest guys on the planet, goes in, recovers my helmet, and then after my little hissy fit was done, I was kind of ready to pack it in and just call it a day. But he also took it upon himself to take apart the throttle on my 450 and get that cleaned up so it was working, which the way the rest of my night went, I probably should have just went home, but still very thankful for Colin for doing all that, which leads us to being on the gate for our first heat race of the night. You'll notice that the gate dropped and we didn't move, 
that's because whatever class this was, I think open C, we were the second drop. But then when our time does come, we do this. After our issues on the gate, we skip forward to where I'm pushing, trying to make up time, and apparently, I think I'm going to get that time back in the air over this tabletop. You learn something new every day, right? On this day, not only did I learn about jumping a two-stroke, but I also learned flat landing something isn't the end of the world as long as you don't panic. Also, big shout out to my suspension guy, Eric Smith. After that, we skip forward a lap to where I'm now under jumping it. I think I'm maybe going for that Goldilocks factor where I have to go once way over, once a little bit short before I can get it just right. Then we have this little gem of a sequence which you can't really tell what happened on GoPro, but to the appeasement of everybody besides me, we had Nick Smith of 893 Photography on scene who was able to capture it in its full glory. Anyways, that's about all you need to see for that one. As we pick up the checkers, you can hear my thoughts on the race. That brings us to our first heat race on our second class of the night, which I believe was the 25 plus BC class. As you can see, we've made the adjustment and we are way back from the gate. The gate drops in. Holy shit, we're actually going to get to do some racing. I actually get off to a pretty damn good start for me. Looks like about third place. Now I don't have a picture of the results or a roster or anything like that, so I don't know how many people were in the race and who the people were. I do however know that one of the guys in front of me is Wheeler Carmichael and I know that because that's the dude with the long blonde hair hanging out of his helmet that I thought was a moto chick and I'm not gonna lie, before I knew she was actually a he, I was freaking checking him out so don't be like me don't get caught slipping in this sport just assume everybody's a guy until you know otherwise Coming into this last section, I'm going to get passed up the inside by Kyle Smith, who apparently is the rival I didn't know I had. If you've watched like any of the last five videos I've posted, hair scrambles, GPs, this, he's been there and we've been going back and forth with each other. Moving forward to the main event for the Open C class, you know, the class where we pinched the gate earlier, also the class where we are leaving on the second gate drop. So yeah, I left with the wrong class. I'm not sure if I got the two classes I was racing mixed up or if I just got overexcited or what, but this was a new one for me and I had no idea what to do. I was like, well, I guess I just pull off. I'm not going to get scored. But then I started to remember, I was like, well, you know, them classes cost like 30 bucks a piece. So <laughs> it's like I'm racing. I went back out. And amazingly, after the first corner, I wasn't even in last place anymore. So ha. And if you think I'm dumb for that little sequence of events, don't worry, you're not alone. The guy going by me right now is the one I got by in the first corner who either crashed or stalled it. 
then I go on to stall in the next corner, so yeah, that's pretty much all you guys need to see for this one. Now we're back on the gate for the main event of what I think was the plus 25 BC class. I get off to another not bad start, falling in around 4th place, but that's not going to hold up for too long. Oh my god, he on X Games mode. We got Young Fruit of the Loom going by us here. Then we bring it over the finish line to collect our white flag. Not too long after that, somebody else is going to come in and make another pass on us. Jumping forward about a half lap, we're going to get past once more, but look at this. We got some hard-hitting C-Class last lap battles going on. Bringing it home to pick up the checkered flag, I have no idea where I finished. I probably don't want to know. But my assessment of this race was, eh, could be worse. After everything that happened today, I'm just glad I lived to tell about it. That should about do it for this video. If you liked what you saw, check out some of my other content. If you really liked it, maybe give it a share, drop a like, do all the things, feed that YouTube algorithm like you're trying to save me from my hangry girlfriend. That's going to do it for season one, which was about learning, about getting my process right. Season two is going to be about pushing out consistent content. Not sure if I will take a little break or jump right into it, but until the next one, guys, peace.